Good afternoon, and welcome to my regular time. It's the first time in about six days, I think, at 5 p.m. of doing my daily Facebook Live. And yes, it's Facebook Live first, in case you're watching on YouTube, and I'll tell you about those later on. And today's episode number 636, and the title today is, Isn't it time to raise your standards? Actually, it's not. It says, Is it time? I'm thinking, Isn't it time to raise your standards? I might tweak that. Anyway, before I jump into that and explain more about it, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about, and why you might be want to watch me. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, relation, sorry, let me say again. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, actually helping women in general, create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which feeds that and also inspired these talks, which I've done every day now for over two years, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And so today we're up to number 636. That's over two years' worth. So, hi Della, nice to see you my broadcast. Um, and the topic today was something that's been on my mind for a bit, about how we could raise our standards, and to simply put, and I mean this in every area, not, this, this is a relationship-centric conversation, but it applies to business, it applies to home and, and accommodations, it applies to your financial status, because I'm working through some of these on myself, so I'm gonna share what I think might help you as well. So. Is it time to raise your standards? I'm gonna already say ahead of time, the answer is yes, there's always time to raise your standards. But I also explain why and what for. Now, we as human beings are impacted a lot by what comes at us. And I've talked before about how we're imprinted from when we're very young by our cultural upbringing, family upbringing, the dynamics that happen there. And a lot of times what we're told and what we learn and what we take on as being the rules have us playing at a lower level than we truly deserve. And that is something that many of us have no clue that is actually holding us back. We just think that's normal and not, um, basically our status in life is already predefined and we can't change it. The reality is our life is what we want to make of it. And simply put, that's, that's the simplest way of putting it. Whatever it might be under the heading of, you might say, well, I had this upbringing, so I can't do this, or I live in this location, so I can't do this. I'm going to be blunt to say, if you say so, so be it. However, if you say differently, that can be true too. And if you're in a place where you think that, or you believe that you can't have any more than you already have in certain areas, I'll ask you this question. Who was it that told you that in the first place? Because 90% of the time, you didn't tell yourself first. You may have told yourself afterwards, but you were told by somebody else who may have been a peer when you were younger, could have been a parent, a sibling, somebody around you when you were younger, they convinced you that your freedom to have what you want is unavailable and that you must play smaller and play a lower standard to get by and not get hurt. And for some reason, I do believe a lot, I, actually I'm saying this in this way, I do have a belief that we, are, we tie pain to success in one way. There's a whole bunch of stuff about success and failure and uh, uh, fear of success, fear of failure and all that sort of stuff too. But I also believe we have pain tied to success too because for some people, the desire to stay where they are and stay stable, stay safe, stay limited in their relationships, in their financial status, in their career choices, in their accommodations, all these different things, is because there's a pain associated with stretching beyond that. Now, it's not real, but something happened when they were young, most likely. And again, this is not you, which is saying, again, I said before, but this, may, this is probably not you. It's somebody you might know, though. So if you want to share this out with anybody, by the way, feel free to do so. The key about this is being willing to ask the right questions. It's tempting to go, well, just the way it is, I can't change that. Well, if you ask yourself the question, what if I could change it? And then you listen to the answer that comes back. If you ask questions that are open-ended that you don't necessarily have the answers to, like I said before, like if you have this program inside that says, well, I can't have what I want, who told you that first? and then allow that person's face, the person's name, the person's relationship to appear to you. You'll either come back as a memory or you actually have a vivid feeling of who that person is. And with that recognition, you realize that it's their stuff, not yours. And this is the thing. You have no requirement to take on other people's beliefs. There's no rules. There may be loyalty to the family dynamic or to your culture, but that doesn't limit what choices you make. In my own experience, coming from a fairly conservative Jewish background in England, 
there was a um, it wasn't unspoken but there was a rule about marrying outside the faith and certainly about marrying um, in a non-temple setting this is my brother I'm talking about when he first when he first got when his, his first marriage because he's been married twice his first marriage he married someone who's Church of England it's a, it's a the Christian it's an English Christian faith Church of England and when he announced he was going to get married in the church where she was raised up my dad my uncle my aunt all threw fits about we're not going to show up the wedding we're not going to go we're not going to attend because that's wrong and I said he could be getting married in a laundromat for all I care I'm coming over to go see him I was in, Eng I was in America at the time he was in England with my family and what I recognized for my brother was he was choosing to follow his choices to actually step into a more empowered place he was ignoring the limited viewpoints of other relatives our, our older peers in fact I mean there were parents and adults uncles and aunts so they were people who were older than us and he at that time was uh, I think early 20 no he was 30-ish 31 so we weren't exactly kids ourselves I was older than, I'm older than him but the recognition was is that we were in a place where we could toe the line and abide by the rules and the culture and what we were raised with or to choose for ourselves what we really want and in that case he chose what you really wanted now, as it turned out, that wasn't the marriage that lasted. The one he's in now has lasted a lot longer. It's a much powerful, wonderful relationship. They've got a daughter, beautiful relationship. Everything's good. But it was the it was that that um, cracking open of the possibility that led to the second one anyway. His choosing of that higher level was a raising of his own standards to come out of the come out from uh, to quote the Bible to come out from among them. <laughs> Just quote the Bible there. For myself, I remember. Um, my grandma, grandmother saying to me, she's passed away a long time ago now, one of the things she says to me before I came to the United States in 81, very traditional Jewish, surprisingly, surprisingly racist, I, I discovered. And she said something to me in Yiddish, which basically is, is whatever you do, don't marry Schwarzer, which is basically marry somebody black. And I was shocked to hear that from her because I didn't think that was her style, her presentation, but she had that rule running. And I was like, that's not me. So I'm grateful in a lot of ways for my brother and I both have learned when we're younger that what the rules set down by a family are do not match who we've become. And we choose to follow that freedom to, path to freedom. And I'm suggesting to you, if you're in a place where you've had your own experiences where your family told you rules about what things should be like or how they should be, when you should get married, how many kids you should have, where you should live, all these different things, and it doesn't fit you, if you haven't already said, I'm going to follow my own heart, this is the time to start doing that. Raising your standards means owning your own power raising your standards means following your heart and raising your own standards means not giving your power to somebody else so this is very much true in relationships in family dynamics in corporate business structures as well and also in relationship to your own inner wiring and programming around health money spiritual practice social life all these different things i'm grateful that i've been aware enough now over the years of being on the trainings for the last 30 plus years that I get better at catching my inner voice that is limiting. I've had a lot of practice. One reason I coach and teach and share it with other people is that I've had enough practice now that I'm pretty good at catching other people's voices that limit themselves. I should say other people's imprinted voices because they're not their own voice. It's the voice from somebody else that you've taken on as your own. So to make this simple and um, succinct, it is time to raise your standards and in particular it's a time to listen to your own voice and to make sure the voice you listen to is really your voice to trust yourself to honor yourself and to respect who you are so the choices you make reflect that and if that means that you might be moving out of where you've been living maybe you're moving geographically maybe you're moving just just out of the same building or maybe you're choosing a different relationship or you're quitting relationship to be single for a while there are so many different ways you can in, in uh, uh, excuse me there's so many different ways you can influence and impact your life that are following the heart following your heart's dreams and you're following your own guided voice from inside but i'll say this first it's tempting to go running headlong into whatever is available going let me try something new let me do this let me do this let me do that what i'm suggesting instead and i want to be clear because i want to make sure this is framed properly is first of all start listening to that voice and make sure it's the right voice so when you start listening, you know it's really the voice that is the truth for you, that's your voice, authentic, clear, and uninfected, un unimpacted by other people's voices. 
so you can then make choices from that place. Not saying you must follow everything that's said, but you then have a clearer perspective to choose from. And by doing that, you'll be much more empowered, much more inspired, and much more happy in life. And that's my wish for you. If you feel like you want support in this, I'll put a link in the comments so you can reach out to me. Um, Relationship-centric and also a contact form so you can find out how to get some help. But really it comes back to is listening to your own voice. And if you're not sure how to hear that, I can help you with that. I hope there's been a value to you. It's one of my daily chats. I'll keep you this in short because I've been actually coming down with a head cold and cough since last night. And so I want to make sure I get through this before I cough my lungs up again. That's a choice too. So that's still what to say there. Oops, that's true to follow your heart because if you fail, then you own, then you own your failure and not blame to anyone as the reason or cause of your failure. It's not your family or relatives' influence for your success or failure, right? But some people believe that they must succeed to match their family's wishes and not follow their own heart. I know career-wise, I was caught in that trap myself, and a lot of people I know are. So yes, it is true that when you fail, it's our own failure. Also, when we succeed, it's our own success. But also, some people are caught in the paradigm where they're winning in life for somebody else, not for themselves. And my nudge in this talk, my invitation in this conversation is to suggest that you may want to win for your own sake. And if that means even doing less than what you've been called to do by somebody else, that's okay. But you're following your true calling, you're following your own heart, and you're following your own guidance to the level that matches where you truly are. And that's healthy. And that's self-honoring. And I'm very passionate about people honoring their own choices. So, yes. So, kind of, sort of, what you said. I, I agree with one part and not with the other one. But that's, that's my perspective. Of course, in my talk, I can say what I wish. So, again, if you have any questions, comments, um, please put them below. I will respond when I sign off. I do have links. I will have links in the comments for a discovery session for a relationship-centered conversation. You're welcome, Sylvia. Thank you for watching and thanks for the comment. Um, relationship-centered conversation and also a contact form if you just have other questions beyond the relationship framework. And... So you know the replays you can find me. This is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, or it's the first time at 5 p.m. Pacific time in six days. Getting back on track. And I do this every day on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replay has gone to my business page where it's easy to find them, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. And then I put them onto YouTube. So you may be watching it there first and not understanding who I'm talking to on these comments, but I do this on Facebook Live first. If you want to catch comments live, join me live on Facebook first so that's the links on YouTube you can find my playlist sorry my excuse me my um, channel is Barry Selby on Facebook on uh, YouTube please find it and subscribe and then there is a playlist called messages from the masculine you find all these broadcasts and finally I have a podcast where I put early one early version of this bro of these broadcasts probably about 40 or so right now which is on iTunes under messages from the masculine you subscribe to that and you can also download the audio versions of the tracks to listen to wherever you are so if you have any questions, comments, thoughts about this, um, I do invite your comments. If you want to share with anybody who you think you should get a nudge or inspiration, could use a kick in the butt, please share it with them. And if you feel like you need a kick in the butt, reach out to me, I'll help you. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel, for a change. And uh, I wish you well. Take care. Bye.